Welcome back, guys, to the number one military podcast on the world, Commando Performance Podcast. This week, we have a special guest. We've got Harry Shepard. He is a uh, ex Royal Marine. He served five years. He left in July, I want to say, um, to pursue his career in personal training, coaching, and helping people get better. So we're going to just dive into his career in the Marines, um, ask him a couple of questions that you have, and then go from there. So let's just invite him in and get started. Hey, how's it going? You hear me? Yeah, how's it going, mate? You alright? Yeah, that's right, you? Yeah, good, thank you. Happy days. How's how's your day been? Yeah, not too bad. Day off today, only one of the week. So, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Just chilling out. You always yeah. have to start one day off a week? Yeah, just one day. I work at six. Um, so I work every day but Wednesday. So I work on um, weekends as well. But anywhere at the week, the weekend mornings. So it's not too bad. Nice. You got many clients now? Is it your New Year? Uh, yeah. To be fair, so in December it seemed like it was about twenty hours a week. So it wasn't too too busy at all. And then as it got to the, like New Year, New Me era, you know, January, uh, the January rush has happened. So it's doubled almost in hours, which is good. Um, so yeah, I'm busy now. 39, 40 hours, that kind of thing, which is good. Happy days, keeps you busy. As long as you, don't, as long as you don't burn out, uh, should be right. Yeah. I yeah, I don't think I should burn out on 40 hours. It should be all right. It's quite a lot with PT, though, because everything's like um, like a one-to-one interview, isn't it, I guess? Yeah. So it's um, it's quite full on when you get up to those eight hours a day kind of kind of deal, but it, it's manageable at the moment. I think upwards of 40 would be, would be a bit more of a struggle. The forties, all right. Yeah, as long as you can get like, yeah, like like that odd day off and just switch off, it's not too bad. Then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you can kind of reset, do all your programming. You know, everything's ready then for the next six six days. Because otherwise, it's a bit full on. Oh yes, is it all your um? Do you do a lot of personal um like programming? Yeah. So every obviously every client has their own program. Um, yeah. So it's not 40 clients, it would be 30-ish probably. And then a few see, see me twice a week, three times a week. So it just depends. I'll always do, um, obviously, program our session. So the session one-to-one. And then anything outside of that, so wherever they want to do two, three a week, um, I'll program all those as well so that they don't run into each other, if that makes sense. So if they're, they're doing like a push pull, push with me, then they'll do a pull on the legs or whatever on their on their own. So they're not going off and doing random stuff. Yeah, a little bit more control. <laughs> I think that's the uh, the part people don't see is the uh, behind the scenes of programming. Like, yeah, you, know, you 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 coach one hour. I'm like, yeah, but I'm programming for like six hours. Like, I, yeah, exactly. The, yeah. the longest that's part the, that's the behind the scenes. Isn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Um, no yeah, and then there's all the, like the client check ins and stuff. Because obviously, say you only see someone once a week, you have to be texting kind of constantly to be able to see whether they're sticking to what you've given them, whether they're sticking to the nutrition you've given them, all that sort of stuff. So it is almost like a full-time thing. You have to like, I always have to remind myself to turn my phone off, you know, at a certain time at night to switch off fully. Yeah, definitely. Um, how's the, you got many lads from the military now uh, with you? As in um, the programming stuff online. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's been doing well. To be fair, the last um, to the last like four, three or four months since I left the core, I've pushed a little bit more on social media and stuff, and sort of the TikTok's grown a little bit, and then leading from that, the Instagram's gone as well. So yeah, it's good. It's um, it's something again that I don't directly necessarily have to put 
eff- consistent effort in if I didn't want to. But if I've got the time and I've got the energy, then I can I can promote things, and then that's when obviously sales happen and stuff. But yeah, um, yeah it's not something that I can pressure. I have to pressure myself to do, which is nice. It's one of those extras that I can do if I've got time. Yeah, because you do a lot of um, like ten week programs stuff like that, don't you? Yeah, that's all it is. It's um, so it's it's they're all PDF programs. Yeah. And depending on someone's goals, ideally, we're obviously building it up um, over time. But ideally, we want to have something for everyone. So um, it started with just three programs, three four-week ones, so mega short, um, pretty much just for lockdown. Uh, so that was when it was it was kind of born. Um, we did a no equipment one, a limited equipment one, and a full gym access one, just so that all bases were covered, kind of, kind of for more like, inspiration for more than anything else obviously there's as you know not a lot you can get done in four weeks in terms of fitness but i felt like people could take those and be like all oh, right so he's programmed it this, this way then he, they can like learn from it and program their own stuff um that them, themselves and then from there it kind of built towards um <clears throat> being a bit more military specific because that was a, a need that i found uh, a lot of people don't have the structure going into the marines so i thought i'd plug that gap um and that seems to have been where it's where it's where it's at that's where, that's where most people are interested i think um and it's it makes sense because when i was going through i don't know if you were the same when i was going through pre-selection i had no idea really what i was doing how much should i be doing what kind of things should i be doing so to have it kind of rat- ratified by one someone who's been through the process and then someone who's obviously got a little bit more of knowledge around the subject as well is quite valuable i feel like so that's um that's the kind of space that's the idea behind it anyway um and then from here we're building into you know there's a squat program now there's a running specific program so that if you've got a specific weakness um you can identify it and and uh plug it with one of one of one of the programs yeah definitely like yeah definitely an issue with me as well is like i said like 15 16 year old lads just haven't got a clue like how to train and yeah you know, when exactly. i joined as well it's exactly the same thing like yeah, I went to the gym and lifted, benched, bicep curls, the usual. But mm. then, yeah, training for the military, I didn't have a clue. But now with like the knowledge I have, uh, it's just trying to pass that on to other lads who don't make the same mistake. And also, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, so it's it's that it's um you're right. It's like like you say, everyone knows that you know to get stronger you need to lift weights and to get fit you need to do cardio. But actually, you know, programming that specifically to what you're going to face in in training there's not too much out there in terms of you know week to week what happens um so if you've been through it i feel that's a massive valuable aspect to pass on to someone yeah definitely um so yeah Mm. a while back you just mentioned leaving the uh the marines so did you leave in july i think it's said on instagram pretty much yeah yeah so my last day was in july but i officially left in september time uh, oh. that, you have that sort of you have that gap don't you between yeah between the two sort yourself out but yeah my last day was um was actually the tunny cup which is pretty good you know, the football uh, football thing down at ctc oh yeah so that was um, a pretty good send off to be fair it managed managed to like um line it up so so it would be you know the last last hurrah if you like um yeah but then september was the last last day realistically oh nice so you've done f- uh, five years is that correct yeah, pretty much bang on. So I joined in 2016, 5th of September. Um, and then, yeah, did bang on five years, pretty much. So my last day was the 18th of September, 2021. 2021 yeah. Uh, what units did you just do? How many units did you uh, go to? Just two. Uh, so I went to four, three out of training um, and then did sort of 18 months, two years there and put my um, application in for a armoured support group and then went down there and that was it. Um, arm support group is one of the only ones that were, I don't know if you know much about it, where you kind of don't move around much. Um, so obviously pretty much everywhere else you go for two years and you move um, locations or move yeah. specs. Whatever it is. But arm support group is one of the ones where you stay. Um, I don't know whether it's going to change because obviously they were talking about the future commando force when I was coming out. Um, but they were, it's a lot of the same trips every every time. So once you've been kind of round the robin twice, 
twice or three times, it gets a little bit, a little bit stale. So I was looking for something else. Yeah, you do the same exercises, same trips every year, pretty much. Yeah, so. you got it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I was, I was SIGs, and like, yeah, it was literally exactly the same thing, like Cougar, Green Dagger, literally mm-hmm. same exercises every yeah. single year. It just gets boring. Definitely sounds familiar. I think if you're in, you have to sort of take that on. If you want, so if you want to stay in, really, um, really adamantly, I think you have to take that on and and actively move around places. I think that's probably the, the way to do it. Um, rather than just accepting your fate, I think you have to take it on a little bit head on and, and think, look, I'm bored here. Let's move somewhere else just to keep it fresh. Yeah, definitely. And then you've done your, uh, you did your PT qualifications in your last year when your chit was in. Yeah, yeah. So um, obviously you get a fair bit of time in the, in the military anyway while you're on camp, certainly to do pretty much nothing. So I kind of utilised that time to, Certainly, my last year, last six months, to um, sit down and do my did my level two gym instructor and my level three personal trainer. Um, but I already have my CrossFit level one from my second year in the Marines. I just did it on a weekend. It's only a weekend course, so yeah. um, that was kind of what sparked my interest into coaching. And then from there, I trained a few of the lads in the Marines. So behind the wire, up at four three, I was training some some of my mates. Um, kind of got reward out of that. Got got some um, you know got some rewarding feeling out of that and then from there found that I wanted to be a coach outside so went down the route of PT yeah I think I'm sure I've seen you in Inferno in Cardiff like years ago maybe yeah 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 yeah. I did Inferno pairs um yeah two two years ago maybe yeah it's another SF lad actually um yeah, so we did the pairs competition there. It was it was supposed to be him and another him and a firefighter who go around and do loads of comps. They've done loads together, but um, I actually competed against them a few like a year before. I have jumped straight in. Why not? Okay. Yeah, Inferno Pairs is a good competition. It's a strength, strength in depth one, but it was a very high level. And I think that lack of training didn't prepare me massively well. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I did put a couple of questions up on, or I put a question on Instagram. I got a lot of questions from lads, pretty much. Good, yeah. Cool. Biggest one, or the biggest question I've got asked is, would you do it all over again? Um, that's a question I've been asked a fair, a fair bit myself. So yeah, I think the answer is pretty much I would. Um, knowing that, uh, sort of how much it matures you as a person, how much, how many people you meet, how many, um, how much you find out about yourself going through not just the training process, of course, that's just the start of it, as you know. Um, you know, you go through the eight months, which is which is very tough. But then you go into your unit, and you've got to go through that phase of being the initial new marine. Then you've got to go through hard exercises like Norways and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, definitely, I would 100% do it again. Um, certainly, if I was 18 again, probably wouldn't when I was um, this age going forward. Just um, due to what I enjoy now. However, looking back, I wouldn't have probably known what I enjoy. Uh, if I hadn't have gone through that first, if that makes sense. Um, so definitely, it taught me a lot about myself, taught me a lot about um, what I do and don't want to do with my life. And so I wouldn't be where I am now without it, so 100%. Happy days. Um, is there anything you regret not doing in the core? Um, good question. I would say... Um, I, I'd probably would have gone somewhere else rather than armored support group and um, looking back obviously hindsight is 2020 20, but i would have probably gone uh to another another spec that was a little bit more um a little bit more active a little bit more enthusiastic there's a lot of people at armored support group that are uh pretty down on things that it's, it's got a high turnover rate of, of chits going in and all that sort of stuff so it's probably not an ideal place to go if you're two years in you know it, it 
if you're already thinking about leaving already, it's going to push you over the edge, right? Definitely. So, um, I'd maybe have gone somewhere else there, and then just volunteering for more things. I think you're uh, everyone I've, I've spoke to. Every every lad who's a bootnecks probably definitely the same who who's left. You look back and all those opportunities you have, which are unique opportunities, you because you're in the moment and they're so so forthcoming and they're so they're so frequent. You you tend not to um you tend not to jump at them too much because you're just like ah oh, it'll come it'll come around. But that actually looking back you should probably go for it all because it, they're all pretty much once in a lifetime opportunities. Certainly some of the things like I don't know ski champs and all that sort of stuff. Um, you, you won't get a chance to do that. Certainly when you leave the core, you realise how lucky you are to have access to all that, that stuff. So, yeah, probably volunteering for stuff and going to a different unit. Yeah. Um, favourite part uh, in recruit training? Um, favourite part in recruit training? I always say, um, I always say finishing. <laughs> it's not really, a, yeah. <laughs> not, not, really, not really an answer, is it? Um, I, I think it would be... Yeah, just just passing for me certainly passing um, bottom field pass outs. So I failed bottom field pass out the first time. Didn't get back through, but had the second crack at it, um, and really struggled with the fireman's carry, okay. which is why I'm big on people preparing with weights and with getting stronger first. Because um, I definitely didn't do that. I was 65 kilos going into training, fucking mega skinny, mega small, super weak. All, all I did was run push ups, pull ups, sit ups. Thought sweet i'll be i'll be good to go um and I, I was very fit in the first stage of training where that is all you do and then as soon as i got weight on my back i was screwed so that's why i'm a massive advocate of, of weight training um and so yeah i struggled i was the lightest bloke in the troop which probably didn't help things um and so because you have to carry a bloke plus what is it like 40 50 pounds of kit with you yours and his kit um in 90 seconds i struggled with that so i, I didn't pass the first one and then you, I don't know if you're aware of how it works, I guess, when you fail something. But on bottom field, you'll go through all the tests. If you fail one of them, you'll ca carry on with all the tests and then go back to do the, the test again that you failed. But of course, by then, your body's written off and you've already gone max chat at that assessment. So the chances of going again and passing it, not really high. So I didn't pass it the second time either. And then you go again like two days later and just gritted my teeth and got on with it and then uh, managed, to, managed to do it. Um, but yeah, the, the the sort of sense of achievement I felt then was pretty high, just because I managed to stay in my troop, and that was something that was going around in my head. I can, I'm sure you can imagine sort of the two or three days in between the two tests, because um, I didn't want to get back troops. So probably that. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's your thoughts on lads running with weight leading up to joining? I tell lads. So I've just done a post about. It. Yeah, so I've just done a post about this actually. It's oh, funny, So um, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't posted it yet, but I just prepared it today. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't advocate it at all. I think that the chance, the chance of you getting injured, are so much higher when you run with weight for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're probably not aware how to pack it properly. So obviously, you get lectures, don't you, in in training and all that sort of stuff, how to pack a burger and all that, how to yeah. do things, how to pack your webbing for running and how to pack your burger for yomping. All different, right? So. Um, you, for you to just guess and throw loads of water in a fucking brook sack, which is what everyone else does, um, and it's probably not going to. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to not going to be it's not going to be great. Um, so that's going to increase chance of injury. Then there's the not knowing how to prevent high impact activity anyway. So adding extra weight to that just makes no sense to me. Um, and then there's the other bit where you get to train and you're not expected to be the finished product. You're not expected to be able to pass the 30 mile, pass the fucking endurance course, all that sort of stuff before you've started. Cause that'd be pointless. That's what training's for. Um, so they're there to build you up to that point. So I don't think you need to worry about be, getting there, being really, really good with weight because that's what it's for. That's, that's what the basic training is there for. So you should focus on, for me, you should focus on building your aerobic endurance, um, building your speed up because you've got to pass mile and a half tests and um, beep tests and all that sort of stuff and then that's on the cardio side and then you should once that's taken care of running wise the rest of your cardio for me should be low impact stuff in terms of zone 2 spin bikes 
rowing intervals, all that sort of stuff that's really high bang for your buck and really low risk of injury. So that's what I think. I don't think you need to run with weight at all before you can get there. That's a, um, exactly what I tell lads as well. Like, mm-hmm. one less run with weight. I do say if they're coming up to recruit train, maybe go for a walk with a rucksack on. But yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Tell lads to like, yeah, like cycle, jump on a bike or rower or jump in a swimming pool. Where yeah, definitely swimming. There's the no world. impact on those joints at all. Yeah, because it's getting they're getting battered enough by how much running you're doing and how much probably high impact circuit training you're doing. You don't need added, um, you know, excessive weight. And then people ask me about running every day as well, and I, I also advise like, against that because y- your joints need the time to recover. Yeah, like I, I have lads mesh me and saying like they run every day and stuff like that, and I'm like, yeah, you don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Like two, three times. Well, that's why. Yeah, exactly. Two, three times a week, four maximum. I'd say the. Um, that's why, at, you know, offering the programming and, and that sort of side of things is is valuable because, like you say, people don't have a clue. I was probably the, exactly that. I'm running maybe six days a week, really high volume, really high, um, really high distances. Um, so I was doing like a half marathon once a week, and then the rest of the time I'm doing just random running. So it, I had no structure to it, and. And that's why I think getting involved with someone who knows what they're doing and someone who's experienced is, is massively valuable. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's another question. Best advice pre-training and, and in-training? So I'll go for in-training first then. So in-training, I'd say um, you want to be, you want to attack every, not every opportunity, every um, task you get given with 100% intensity. So um, everything that the training team tells you to do, you want to do to the best of your ability, first of all, and 100% speed <laughs> that you can do it at. All right. So um, they're going to pick up on that as it goes as you go through training. So they're going to pick up on the fact that you've um, you've attacked something, even if you're not the best at it, you've given it the, your best shot. So you're not just uh, going th- through Going through the motions with stuff because they don't want to, they don't want to see that. So that's the first thing. Dig out. I think if you can show that you're working hard for others and putting them ahead of yourself, then that's a massive win for them. They're going to take that forward. And um, before training, I would say to get on to so first of all, probably bias coming from me, but to sort your fitness out. Um, for me, I would when I was in training, I don't know if you were the same that. Um, if you saw people who have struggled with fitness, there's so many things to worry about in training, right? So there's so many things to like to, to learn or to, to worry about or to panic about in terms of testing. Um, but if your fitness is taken care of and you're, you, you're fit and you know you can pass IMF pass out or whatever it is, then that's such a big portion of it taken care of already. So get your fitness sorted out first. Um, and then from there, try and get used to doing something uncomfortable every day. This is what I advise people to do when they ask me about Improving mental strength for it's a bit of a nuanced word, isn't it? For um, for marine training, so mental mental toughness, mental strength, whatever you want to call it. And um, I always say the best way to do that is to just do something that you don't want to do every day because that's saying to your brain, let's get through these pathways of these these um these comfortable you know lying in bed just because you want to because it's the easy thing to do and then let's pick the hard option. So it's that classic thing, isn't it? That sounds mega chad. That's you know, um. Easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easy life. So it's that, that kind of thing I would say beforehand to, to sort of live by uh, if you can and make, make yourself uncomfortable every day. They were David Goggins, but that's, that's what I'd say. Yeah. And last one then, just to finish off, is uh, what's it like trying to find work after you, they put retire, but obviously after you leave the core? Like, yeah, not retired yet. Yeah. yeah you put a lot of lads or a lot of lads have left now. And then what's, mm-hmm. have they all got jobs, found jobs quite easy? Yeah, so you get, obviously, the driving qualifications is, is the big one, the easy one to um, to go into. I would say, you know, if you're really struggling, you can go and do lorry driving. Probably not the best thing to do if you if you don't enjoy it. I've got a mate right now, actually, anecdotally, who's um, looking at rejoining because he, he left 18 months ago-ish, two years ago maybe, who's gone into lorry driving, making really good money, actually really busy. 
but he doesn't want to do it. That's not what he wants to do. So he's now in the process of rejoining the Marines. So probably not a good um, a good idea to leave with nothing in place. I would say the best th- best advice I could give is to, if you're looking at leaving within the next 12 months, 18 months, whatever it is, if you know you're going to leave, the thing is you get given 12 months to kind of run up to leaving. So make sure that during that time you're finding stuff to do because if you just if you just go through the motions and don't prepare well enough, then you're going to get outside and think, right, I haven't got a- uh, any idea. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I haven't got any qualifications behind me. So you're going to, you're going to struggle. But so for me, I, I got my PT qualification sorted out, knew that was what I wanted to do. And then I shopped around for gyms while I was in the Marines. I actually got a part-time job as a PT doing weekend work while I was in, in the Marines. So I would work seven days for the last sort of four or five months. So I'd work five days in, the, in down south in Bournemouth, drive up here, work at the gym I actually work in now uh, for the weekend and then drive back. So I was working quite hard, but that's, that's necessary for me to have, have the confidence to then go out um, and have something behind me because that would have been the worst thing for me coming out and being like, yeah, what do I do now? Because um, if you don't have a passion or you don't have something that you, you're trying to go after, then, then you'll struggle. But yeah, I think it's, it depends on the industry. It depends on what you want to go into because, so for, for example, lads who are vehicle mechanics in the Marines are probably going to find it pretty easy to go into a mechanics job. For, um, lads who are snipers and who have no idea what else they want to do in life probably going to make it be a little bit more difficult because it's not as transferable. All right, so um, it depends on what you want to do, I would say. Yeah, definitely. What's your end goal with, uh, with the coaching? You got an end goal? Um, so I don't think I've got an end goal, but I've got a few little goals, right? So I work obviously at a gym at the moment, um, and that, I'm really enjoying that. I, I work as an em- employed PT, meaning I get someone else pretty much brings the clients in, and I just have to keep hold of them. Um, and they, yeah, they. I work out my own diary and all that sort of stuff. But they just bring the clients in, and I consult with them and then bring and then keep them on board um so that's a, a little bit of a, a unique model in itself but in terms of goals for the future i definitely want to go traveling on my own terms obviously you do a lot of traveling with the marines but it's different because you're working all the time and you're uh, in places that you haven't necessarily chosen to go to so i definitely want to travel um and then i want to keep helping people out via social media and reach improve my reach online to um to more and more people and, and get the get the message out that you can structure a program to go into the Marines. You don't have to just fly by the city pants like we all thought you had to do. Um, and yeah, build my client base, all that sort of stuff. Just be, just, um, be a busy coach at the moment because I'm just trying to learn my trades. Even though I consider myself a good PT, you're never too good to learn, right? So um, it's, it's, it's about that first year, first two years, of getting as many hours as I can, just making as many mistakes, you know, and, and learning from those mistakes. That's, that's, that's what it's about in the first two years for me. Um, and so, yeah, improving my quality, is, my, my quality as a product, as in what I deliver to my clients, um, and improving my reach to help more and more people. Ever thought of opening your own gym? Uh, uh, I have. I've, to be fair, that was like... I was one of my because of all the the other the extra stuff that wouldn't be um what I wanted to do. So like in terms of managing memberships, managing finances, all that sort of stuff that um, that I see my boss dealing with now that's fairly stressful. Uh so potentially something along the lines of a, a unit I would look at opening. So um a mini gym essentially that would have members or would have people come in and be, be pc by me i could also use that to create content for socials um and then i would use that for other pts to pt their clients in in that place so almost like a pt studio um maybe going forward in i don't know five years whatever whatever however you never know when things are going to uh going to pick up there exactly well, and then last one is how uh, where can people find you What's your Instagram? Yeah, so Instagram is Harry Shep Fitness, um, all one, 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 all one word, no spaces, um, no underscores or anything like that. TikTok is the same, so Harry Shep Fitness again, um, and Facebook is is again the same. And if if anyone wants email regarding programming or anything like that, it's um, 
harryshepfitness at gmail.com. Um, so, yeah, they're my plugs, little shameless plugs. I mean, I'll, I'll chuck them all in the description anyway, so anyone can just nice like, one. click on them. And then that's pretty much it. Yeah, you got anything for the lads listening before you fin out? Um, not particularly. I would just say to um, to just really consider, really look into what um, what you're trying to do. If you if you're thinking about joining the Marines, this is I'm, I'm assuming that's you're going to be your, your audience. So uh, certainly if they've watched this long, um, so I would say make sure you know what it, what it entails. Four years, not a massive amount of time, but it is a substantial substantial chunk of your life. So make sure you you aware that you, what what it is in, it entails and that your family are aware you relationships or your partner or whatever is aware of, of what they're going to face in terms of training and in terms of um, after that into a unit because something I have to tell people often certainly not that's probably you know, you can't really them, they're not aware of that uh, you might come, become unstuck so that's something just to protect your like social lives uh, when you're in when you're in, the, in training because it can all come nice and come really fast and if if the, you've got your missus shouting at one ear your training team shouting at your other ear it's not going to be a fun situation so sort that out first <laughs> i would say yes definitely well yeah thanks for jumping on the call no worries in a pleasure. and uh, yeah it has um cool i'll uh I'll chuck the um, the link to this in, in my socials as well, my story and stuff, so people can listen along. Yeah, sweet. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Nice one, mate. Good luck with everything. Yeah, you too. See you later, pal. Yeah.